From a devastating hurricane landfall in South Carolina to a stall out to now looking like it may go offshore, folks, Imelda has given us some big time anxiety this week, but now we've got trends and trends build consistency consistency builds confidence. And I've got a lot more confidence than I did this time yesterday, folks. Let me show you what I'm talking about. If you're new to this channel, folks, I break down the patterns. I give you transparent looks along the way. Please like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications as we continue to track Imelda that will form later today into tomorrow and continue its track up toward the north with a measured approach, folks. I always keep up to it. I'm not going to tell you uh, to, to uh, get stressed out early. I don't clickbait you. Uh, my goal is to prepare you not to scare you and yesterday honestly was not a good day for the models early on we were looking down the pipe of what could have significant impacts and thankfully we can change that impact uh you know uh, lower impacts possible. I'm going to actually change it on the fly as my banner did not update, but there you go. Boom. Lower impacts possible as this track continues. Now, can we let our guard down completely? No. Uh, this thing does like it slows down and gets caught up into some jet stream um, uh, patterns here, but what's honestly good, and, and I've never said a Cat 4 is good before. You've never heard those words out of my mouth, but if there's a silver lining to this monster right here, this is Umberto. It got stronger faster and this thing, Imelda, I mean, can we just do a wah, wah, wah? I mean, it's very disorganized. Now, I say that there's a lot of heavy rain and the possibility for flooding in the Bahamas right now. So it's not great for vacations and it does have a flood risk. So please be careful if you're watching right now on the islands. And please do let me know in the comment section right now where you're watching from. Are you thankful for this big change? I'm sure you are because this was not a good situation this time yesterday. Here's the brand new model guidance on Imelda. Uh, it's tropical depression number nine now. It's going to be Imelda. It comes up like this, and many of the models now have started to shift this even as far south, I should say, as, as Jacksonville, basically, then curving out. Uh, the official forecast from the National Hurricane Center shows that. This hard right, it's very rare you see this, folks. This time yesterday, they were flipped. It's like this thing got inverted, and I'm thankful for it. And, and the reason being, as you see the GFS plotting that, is a lot of changes have happened with, with Imelda feeling the pool from an upper level low that's over the southeast with also <clears throat> Umberto that's just offshore. Look at this. They're a pair of strong hurricanes. I mean, big time strong hurricane, cat one or so, then making that curve away. That That is fantastic news, folks. And now that we're in the wheelhouse of the 12Z, we're able to see this. It is coming up toward the north into Monday and then wobbling around here offshore, and then it kicks out. Never makes landfall, gives us a little bit of a scare along the south coast of South Carolina, but it does not make landfall on this map. Let's look closer at the rainfall totals, and that swath will be important for us to look at. New GFS coming in like this. And I mean, it certainly gives two, three, four inches of rain to the low country of South Carolina, Savannah, Georgia, but we're talking manageable rain, not devastating or high impact rain. For the Western Carolinas, these numbers have dropped to a half an inch or so, half an inch to maybe an inch in Greenville, more like one to two in Spartanburg. Now this is also combined with an upper level low. As you look at the composite reflectivity, this is a low pressure coming in like this. Some of those outer bands may be getting into the coast, but this rain right here is actually a result of the upper low that's over us as well. So some rain for the Carolinas, but manageable rain. And then this thing kind of filters on out. I mean, this is a significant turn of events, folks, for us. Let's look at the trends. Here's the 12Z model run. It's got one to two, maybe three inches of rain with the upper level low combined with the tropical system. But generally, from a low of, of a half an inch in, in Pickens and Clemson to a high of maybe four and a half inches along the coast. This is manageable, folks. This is very manageable. And looking at the trends here, there's the 6Z model run. There's the 0Z model run. And here's the current model run. So we're in that wheelhouse with like four runs in a row showing a half an inch to an inch across the upstate. More toward the coast with potential flooding there. How about the wind speeds? Here's the 6Z wind gust swath. 30 mile per hour winds, again, upper level low and tropical system with the highest wind gust 43 miles per hour in Myrtle Beach. And you get that on a, on a normal day with, with breezy storms. Let's look at the 6Z and, and refresh this for the 12Z. Here we are. You got 30, 35 mile per hour wind gusts across the Western Carolinas. Looks like a 47 mile per hour wind gust from Myrtle Beach to Charleston. So it gets windy 
Um, and the time frame of the highest winds right now would be Tuesday, Tuesday afternoon into Tuesday evening. So we get wind gusts in the upstate, but mainly as a part of that upper level low. How about the European? Uh, we've got a couple of different solutions here. Let's flip back here to the zero, zero, Z. This comes up to the north, hard right. Now what happens? You see on the right-hand side of the screen, you got Umberto right here, very strong storm system. That is pulling down on this, not allowing it to go farther north, and then pulling it with it here. So then it goes away, completely away from the United States and never makes landfall. This would, of course, bring in some heavy rain because it does get close to the coast. You got five inches of rain in Horry County, Myrtle Beach. Uh, you got two in Columbia. You got 0.8 inches in Anderson, about an inch or so in Greenville, about four tenths of an inch in Asheville. Folks, major shift, major change here. Some of the outer bands could get into the east coast of Florida, but central Florida, my friends watching right now all across Florida, much, much, much better. Much better, guys. What an answer to prayers. I mean, I'm telling you. How about the European wind gust swath? Some of those winds do get up into to Myrtle Beach. Let's look at the zero Z a little bit further out. And you got 35 mile per hour winds there. This time yesterday, they were 70, 75, going inland 60, 70, further inland to the upstate 50, 60. Uh, so, I mean, not good yesterday, not good at all. But the trends changed about midday yesterday, last night, middle of the night run, and this morning. I stayed up way too late, woke up way too early today. Uh, just really um, excited to see the models and, and with great confidence here can say this thing looks like it's curving away. Here's the Canadian. Let's refresh this, see if we got the 12Z, and we do. Canadian comes up, Canadian goes out. Canadian doesn't even get close to the Carolinas. I don't even think the Canadian gives us any rain at all. I mean, you got the upper low, so it's kind of hard to distinguish what's the upper low and what's the tropical system, but man, curls, curls away. Fantastic news there. All right, let's look at some of the ensemble forecasting and kind of look closer at Tropical Depression 9. Here's the official cone. I need to refresh that. Did it not refresh for me? There it goes. So loving that. You saw it happen in real time. Uh, the new cone that came out, hard right, removes the Carolinas altogether. Not in the cone at all. Um, keeps it right offshore and then curves it around. I wouldn't be surprised if the new model pushes down a little bit. We get a new track at 5 p.m. today. <clears throat> wouldn't surprise me if maybe right here at this marker near Jacksonville, you start to see a curve instead of up here because that's the way the, the model trends have been today. And let's look at those. Look at this. Every single one of our deterministic tracks, the European, the GFS, the two tropical producing ones, all of them go to the east. You got this little rogue one right here, the h mom. <coughs> Excuse me. Intensity. Cat 1, Cat 2. Remember, it's over very warm water. We talked about this yesterday. Is there a possibility of rapid intensification? What's counteracting that, thankfully, is the fact that we have dry air and wind shear impinging upon this on the left side. If it weren't for that, we could certainly have, as you see above my head right here, the warm waters. We could have some rapid intensification. And that, that's certainly trying to happen in this storm. It's no dummy. It knows it's over warm water. But dry air and wind shear appear to be impinging upon that to some degree as well. So we'll have to watch that closely and, and moving forward, I think that would be the, the thing we'd look out for as it would uh, be one to watch. All right, let's dig in here more. Uh, European ensembles out er, to the right. All right. GFS ensembles farther south and then right. Brunswick maybe. And by Brunswick, I mean latitude Brunswick and then east, not into Brunswick. Okay, I know you're watching right now. Hello, hello, hello. All right, here we are with uh, the Canadian curving out Google's deep mind folks if this holds true and I hope that it does Google's deep mind will have won the day it outperformed the GFS and the European now I know I, I I am all very super skeptical of AI but if it can help us in weather forecasting because you know weather forecasting is about data and if deep mind AI can can think smarter than our other computer models, which are smart as well. They do account for other storms and uh, things like that. But one of those situations that we're going to have to unpack here. But right now, I am I am so pleased with what I'm seeing out of these models. And Google's DeepMind model performed very well. Here was yesterday's uh, run. I mean, from this to this. Wow, folks. I mean, just so phenomenal. Let's look at the tropical storm risks uh, for, for the uh, 
the excessive rainfall here. Now, of course, we have that front over us. So as we go into Monday, Tuesday, where we could have some flooding if we do get this to come in, this combination of tropical moisture coming in and the upper low, uh, three, four, five inches of rain, we got a medium risk, folks. But even that is looking a whole lot better than it did this time yesterday. So folks, uh, thank you for being here. I want to pull up your comments from last uh, time. But if you're new to the channel, uh, please go ahead and like this video, subscribe now, and turn on those notifications. It's a great way to stay informed. And when you're watching these type videos, um, I do give multiple updates. So, And at the end, one of my favorite things to do is to pull up the uh, videos of my last one and, and be able to look at some of these con some of your your comments to be able to see what you guys have to say. Some some of your questions are as uh, you know. I, I do consider you guys a community. We're we're a family here watching what could happen. And folks, when you're talking about serious impacts like we have, I know that anxiety can be high. So my goal, as always, is to be measured in my approach with you and to keep you posted along the way. So let's look at some of these uh, different comments that you guys have, questions that you may have for me, and let's unpack it here with uh, what you guys have for me. And please uh, let this be known to you right now. Please leave your comments in the comment section right now. Let me know where you're representing from, and I'll read these comments uh, later tonight where you're watching from. So Chris says, yes, sir, Greenville, South Carolina here again. Let's hope the trend continues. My WeatherWise app is showing the spaghetti models trending out to sea right now. I did go out earlier to prep just in case. So did I. Got some of the Halloween stuff decorations down. I didn't want those to go flying. I appreciate your transparent and frequent updates. I've been more into following weather here and elsewhere lately. It's nice to have our local guy doing so much. You broadcast on TV, post updates on social media, and post full detailed videos for us. Thank you for all you do. Hey, thank you, Chris. I sure appreciate that. Uh, yeah, this, whether I'm on TV or I'm here online, I, I'm the same each way. I, I, I am, my style of forecasting is a bit different from others. And, you know, the level of detail and the constant updates aren't for everybody. But if you like weather, you appreciate transparent forecasting. I hope that you, 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 you do. It sounds like you do. And you guys are watching right now up here too as well. So whether it's snow, severe weather, hurricanes, my commitment is to always keep you posted on that. So if you're, you're looking for a place to follow weather, it's here. Laura says, hey, thanks, Chris, from Nash County, North Carolina. I appreciate the no hype reporting on what's coming or not coming. Praise the Lord, says Faith. Very wonderful news to wake up to from Conway. Thank you. I live in the heart of Myrtle Beach. I appreciate your concern and your expertise. I've been praying. Prayers do work. Thanks, Chris. Thank you, Sonia. They sure do. Hex Maniac Chris. Uh, thank you, Chris, for your updates. God bless. Watching from St. Augustine, Florida. Hey, thank you, sir. Charlotte, North Carolina, so grateful for you, praying for a better outcome. And our favor is what we need to hear. Watching from Sebring, Florida, thank you, Chris, for your time, knowledge. It's appreciated. Acts, absolutely. And what a blessing this new trend has been. Why, my, oh, my. Franklin, North Carolina, checking in and hoping those trends continue out east. Thank you for all the hard work you do at keeping us informed and stay safe because we surely do not need this storm in western North Carolina. You bet, Franklin, uh, there in Franklin, Matthew. Um, I got to tell you, I mean, the concern that I had yesterday was that we were three days out from a high impact storm. It's not like we had seven or 10 days out and that's what the models were showing. It was three days out. Everything pointed our way for the fifth run in a row. So that's why the alarm bell started ringing yesterday that, hey, we've got a weekend to prepare. That's it. And then this thing's on our doorstep. So um, I, I'm so thankful. And I don't think I've seen them turn so quickly and so harshly like they have. I'm thankful it did. But folks, this isn't normal. Um, so I'm, I, you know, I'm very thankful for this uh, unexpected turn to the east and, and, and glad for it. Hendersonville, North Carolina, glad that we won't have another Fran type situation. Yeah, Fran got me. Fran got me in the farm uh, in Hendersonville. Grew up there. I uh, hope everyone's spared, especially our mountains. Uh, thanks always, Chris, watching from Greenwood and praying. York, South Carolina is in the house. Good morning, Chris. Thank you always for your awesome forecasting. Rose, good morning to you. It seems to be a change every day. Yeah, we've we've had no 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 lack of, of drama in the weather department lately. That's right. I hope this new track is right from Greenwood. Greenwood, South Carolina is in the house. Corpus Christi, Texas, watching and praying. Charleston here. I'm keeping my eyes open, but I'm liking the hook out to see. Still checking your updates every time you put out a new update. Thank you, man. Hey, thank you. You bet. Mount Pleasant in the house, just across the bridge from Charleston. My favorite place in the world, Anna. We love coming to IOP and, and uh, Sullivan's Island um, and, and Mount Pleasant's our, our thorough pass. I'm sure we pass by you. We'll wave next time. 
Uh, hi, Chris. I can only repeat myself. You're rocking. I appreciate the way you present the weather. I'm living in Kissimmee, Florida, so your content is vital to my well-being, and I thank you for that. Good evening from Pensacola, Chris. Great job forecasting. I love your show. The rain happened again today, and temperatures are a little cooler in the 80s. The humidity is high, and it feels like we're in the 90s. Oh, well, that is the way it is. Sincere regards, Mark. Yeah, it's, 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 it's getting there. Progress, Mark. We're almost there for you. Thank you for watching, as always. Daisy, south end of Myrtle Beach here. Much appreciated details of the associated weather forecast. Now I'm a subscriber. Been prepping all day. Thanks for the improvement of the majority of the models compared to earlier today. Check back tomorrow. Hey, thank you. Keep checking back in, and you know I'm going to keep you posted on the patterns even beyond this. Severe weather season, uh, snow season. I mean, we, we've got it all, folks, and I'll, I'll keep you posted with these same type transparent forecasts. Hopefully it's nothing as dire as this. Brandon says, we live in Seneca, Clemson, South Carolina, but parents planned a trip to Myrtle Beach on Monday, Tuesday, so this is crucial for safety. Thanks for all that you do and the updates. Hey, Brandon, thank you for that kind word. Uh, certainly keeping you posted as well. Zeta watching from Lakeland, Florida, Camden County, Georgia. Watching from Mount Pleasant, South Carolina. Hope these models verify. Watching from North Carolina. Hey, Gertrude. God said he never would leave us or forsake us. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, amen. We have our faith in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Now, thank you. Uh, Gertrude, absolutely. What, what a beautiful way of saying that. Uh, what an answer to prayers, too. I mean, this is great. We're going to hope it stays true and uh, watch it closely. Carteret County, North Carolina, or Carteret County here. Thank you, sir. Clinton, North Carolina. Thank you for all your dedication, Chris. Waycross, Georgia's in the house. Hi, Shannon. Gaffney's in the house. Do you uh, do the models predict any wind speeds? That's the scary part for me. Thankfully, they've all tamed down. I showed you that earlier in the video. If you don't rewind this video, uh, it'll show you there. But yeah, things are looking better. Mo from Coleman, Alabama. I love what you do for everybody. Hey, thank you. New subscriber here, northeastern central Pennsylvania. I also keep tabs on the weather with the National Weather Service, State College, Pennsylvania. Hey, thank you for being here. I'll be keeping you posted of uh, upcoming snows in your neck of the woods. You know, late October, early November, we can start getting some action. So we'll watch it closely. Larry Roberts, watching from Myrtle Beach, praying for all of us on the coast. Thank you. Thank you. Very concerned on Ocean Isle Beach. Hey, thank you. We're watching it for you. Things are looking a little bit better. Columbia, Florida in the house. I sure appreciate this coverage. We got Hilton Head in the house, the upstate of South Carolina, Mount Pleasant. Interesting note, saw earlier Marion County Walmart had already sold out of bottled water. Yikes. Yeah, people people get interesting whenever it comes to this time, trying to stock up. Hey, thanks for the update watching from the upstate. We got Buffalo, New York, but having family in Spartanburg. Hey, thank you for showing, uh, thank you Jesus for showing mercy to the Carolinas. Amen to that. Pennsylvania, watching from Holly Ridge, North Carolina have to delay our move for a few days. Oh, safe travels there, and congrats on your move. Waycross, Georgia. What else we got? Marion, North Carolina. Hi from Anderson. RV in North Myrtle Beach. Tropicals, locals are saying tropical storm of Cat 2. No big deal. Yeah, thankfully, things are changing. That previous forecast was no joke. Thankfully, we are seeing that trend down, but glad you were ready to bug out if you had to. All right, uh, we got Tampa, Florida in the house. Hendersonville, North Carolina. Outer Banks, Kitty Hawk, North Carolina. Hey, thank you for tuning in. Uh, it would be a good thing if Umberto gets stronger, right? Yes, it would. Gives it a nice little tug to the east. Hey, we need rain in Virginia. I hope we get clobbered with some rain. Yeah, you could use some good rain. It's been drought, but you don't want it from this. This would be too much rain. Especially if you haven't had rain, you get tropical rain. That would not be good. Tidewater, Virginia. Sandy was the last big one here. Hey, thanks for tuning in. Uh, Daphne, Alabama, Imelda pulls Umberto out to sea. That's, that's uh, other way around. Hopefully, yeah, that's what we're looking for. Burnsville, North Carolina, Aiken, South Carolina, Myrtle Beach, Virginia, Umberto, Imelda, yep. Whittier, North Carolina, and there we go. Folks, thank you. Thank you for tuning in, and thank you for sticking around through this. Folks, my goal, as always, is to prepare you for everything. I'm going to have another update later today when uh, the full suite of the European comes out. I'll post it on my platforms, and we'll continue to keep you posted, folks. But I am so, so grateful, so grateful that these trends have happened. We can't let our guard down. Of course, I will not be. I'll be pouring over the data just as I was yesterday. But Whew, cautiously optimistic, and we'll continue to watch it for you. Many more updates to come for you later today. Folks, if you don't already, please consider liking this video. Comment in the comment section where you're watching from, and hit that subscribe button if you don't already. I would be very grateful if you would so that we can continue this conversation for other storms down the line.